police. In the morning. Welcome, B-Movie fans, to another B-Movie interview. I'm Paul, and joining me today is filmmaker Pat Evans, who's here to talk about his new documentary, The Beat of the Bat, which is about the 1960s television Batman series. Pat, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. Thanks for joining. It's always awesome when I get to talk about Batman. Yeah, I agree. Should be all the time. Oh, yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about your filmmaking history? Uh, my filmmaking history is um, limited. My experience in in the film industry, I have a lot of um, mainly uh, kind of casting large crowds of extras for films. Um, you know, I have a, a lot of experience editing kind of my own stuff and doing After Effects and things like that. And I've helped out on a lot of other video projects and things like that. And I have people, for the most part, helping me handle the cameras. So it's just a matter of me pointing them in the right direction. <laughs> you know, they're mostly interviews. So basically, the main thing I need is uh, camera operators. I've got all the uh, bat information stored in my head. So, you know, it's really just a matter of asking good questions of the interviewees and then just letting them tell the story. Yeah, it's I'm play. It's uh, gonna be pretty visual. There's a guy named uh, David Rose. I want to plug real quick. He's a tremendous animator. I don't know if you've seen um, on YouTube. He did a recreation of the an animated recreation of the Batman TV show opening. You know where they're running and all that, but he did it in this with the Christopher Nolan characters from like Dark Knight. You know Gary Oldman and Christian Bale, so it's it it was really popular, got a lot of views, and I've been a fan of his for a while. So I approached him about doing the opening scene, opening credits for our film too. So he's on board for that. So that's really cool. Um, additionally, I'm like creating a lot of miniature props and things like that from the series to kind of add a visual punch to it. You know what I mean? So it's not just like static talking heads and things like that. You know, it's I'm trying to kind of capture the spirit of the TV show within the documentary, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, did you say the guy's name was David Rose? or David Rose, yeah, that's okay. right. Happy, Happy Dragon Pictures is his YouTube channel. I'll definitely have to check that out. But... Yeah, fun stuff. He's a great animator, really talented guy, huge Batman fan, and uh, really happy I keep adding these great people to the project. <laughs> All good people are allies of the Batman, so it sounds like a good team you've got. Yeah, got a lot of great interviews, too, so far. A lot of the key interviews. Bob Bain, he is a, a legendary guitarist. He actually played with all three of the uh, Batman composers, Neil Hefty, Nelson Riddle, and Billy May. Played with Sinatra. He was the Tonight Show guitar play, player for like 30 years with Carson. He played on like the theme songs to not only Batman, but like MASH, uh, Bonanza, you know. Dun, 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 dun. He was one of those guitar players. We interviewed him. He, he told us all a bunch of great stuff. My buddy Wally Wingert, who is best known as a voiceover actor, he played the Riddler in all three of the Arkham games. And he's been a friend of Adam's for like 30 years. I, I mean, he's forgotten more about this, the, <laughs> the 66 TV show than most people know. He's terrific, and he's been really supportive of the project. And we did an interview with him, and he just... Uh, the guy's like an encyclopedia of 66 Batman knowledge. So that was a lot of fun. And he also... I don't know if you... Did you see the uh, Return of the Cape Crusaders animated film that just came out? Um, no, I haven't seen that yet. Um, I heard about it, but not too much. Yeah, it's great. Adam and Bert, it's set in the the universe of the 66 show. Um, and Adam and Bert came back and played Batman and Robin again. And Julie played, Julie Newmar played Catwoman. And then Wally got to play the Frank Gorshin Riddler, which was really cool for like a lifelong dream for him because he got to, you know, be in a Batman show with Adam finally. And he was friends with Frank, so Frank was one of his heroes. So it was like just a, a dream come true for him. And uh, yeah, so the influence and and obviously like they carried forward the music 
you know, the spirit of the music for the Return of the Cape Crusaders Crusaders too. You know, they used the original Batman theme and then did their own like little variations on it and stuff and did music kind of modern music in the style of the show. So the influence of the show, musical influence of the show is still being felt as well, which is really cool to see that. The Lego Batman movie too, if you if, did you see that? Yeah, I, I loved that. Yeah. I saw that with my wife um, not long ago. It's really good. It's awesome, right? Oh, yeah. And tons of references, not just to the, the series, but to the music of the series, which is really exciting for me to see, obviously. Good, good timing for the documentary. What first inspired you to make this documentary? Because it was the very first album I owned was Neil Hefty's uh, Batman theme and 11 Hefty Bat songs. My preschool teacher gave it to me. I was a fan since I was like four years old and that she had an old copy of it. And she knew I liked Batman. So she was like, hey, have this. So I just listened to it constantly, you know, just laying on. I remember, you know, laying on my the carpet in my dad's den, you know, with the his gigantic headphones on my little head, just listening to it over and over again, you know. Um, and none of the songs on that album really appeared on the show, you know. Uh, Neil was contracted to do the, the theme song for the show, but couldn't end up doing the music because of other commitments. So you had the, Bat- the Batman theme from that album was released as a single, uh, that he charted with, but um, the rest of the songs, you know, didn't appear on the show at all. They were just like Neil did a kind of a Batman themed album, you know. But I loved it, and uh, you know, it's like just ingrained in my DNA. You know, I still love it to this day. And you know, watching all the behind the scenes stuff on on the Batman show over the years, and even up to the new. It's great that it's finally on Blu-ray, the whole series, but nothing except for Ralph Garman makes one mention. He tells a story about how his first words were na 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 Other than that, nobody even mentions the music. And I was like, this is just criminal, criminal, because it is so much a part of the show, you know, that people don't. I mean, when you can walk up to anybody anywhere in the world and go na 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 and have them instantly know what you're talking about. That's unbelievably powerful. I mean, you don't, that's just a global phenomenon, you know, that's never been properly looked at. And the story of how they made, they actually like scored the episodes for the show. And, you know, uh, Nelson Riddle's villain themes that he did, and even the little transition, you know, everybody knows that too, you know, so. And they used it in the Lego movie, and they used it in the Return of the Cape Crusaders still, um, variations on it. So um, they've done it on The Simpsons, you know, they've referenced the music uh, of the series uh, several times on The Simpsons. So, you know, the cultural impact of it is is there. It's just never been looked at and put into proper perspective, so... Definitely. Like you said, there's pretty much no one on the planet that doesn't know the theme song to the 1960s Batman. I mean, I am, I'm a big fan of the um, animated series and all that, but and, and I can remember like every part of the opening, but as far as like the opening theme to the 1960s um, Batman, it, it's just so iconic. Like That is essentially what Batman is. Yeah, and it was, it was his first the first musical identity that Batman ever had, you know, so that's from, you know, Batman history perspective, that's very important too, you know, uh, before that you just had like the black and white serials or whatever. And they had, you know, some quickly written music for them, you know, or stock music, you know, it wasn't, you know, they they were very cheaply made and the Batman theme in particular was definitely the first, um, time the character had been given like, you know, given a proper musical identity. Yeah, the Superman theme before that, you know, which was pretty pretty good and appropriate, um, or for the Max Fleischer cartoons, but neither one of those had the Im- impact that the Batman theme did, <laughs> that's for sure. What would you say is the most unique aspect of the beat of the bat? It covers a lot of ground, I'll tell you that. It's great, because, you know, you tell people, oh, yeah, I'm doing a documentary about the music of the batman tv series you know and they're like oh that sounds really really cool to tell the whole layout of it, it takes too long kind of to 
explain to people usually one-on-one, you know, yeah. <laughs> like you kind of, cause I've gone down some rabbit holes with this one. I mean, obviously there's so many versions of the theme. It was the most recorded version of the theme in 1966. Uh, it won the Grammy for best instrumental that year too, as well. Then over the years, it's continued to be covered, you know, by like the jam, uh, the smithereens, the flaming lips, you know, um, Brian Setzer, just tons of versions of it throughout the years. And, but then there's also the music of the series. So we tell the story of how of the musicians that played on the actual scoring sessions of Batman. And then the guy who edited them, the, uh, did the sound editing for the film too, also played a large role in that. Then you've got like the cast <laughs> recordings like the uh cast all did kind of burgess meredith frank gorshin adam west and burt ward all did like released singles you know to capitalize on the batman phenomenon you know then you had a bunch of quickie just whole knockoff albums by different people that you wouldn't necessarily think of members of sun Ra's band ended up like being the backing band on one of those like cheapy batman themed albums that was rushed out at the time like so i think if you're talking unique i guess i would say like scope of it <laughs> maybe like the attempt to to, to put all these because there's a, a lot of this information is out there you know and you can certainly read and some excellent articles on it and things like that and interviews um another guy that we have that is like a critical interview and an early supporter of the project is John Burlingame, who wrote Television's Greatest Hits, which is like the definitive book on uh, TV themes, you know, um, and TV music. And he's a professor at USC, and he's basically the nation's leading expert on film and television music. I mean, he's another wa- walking encyclopedia. He's uh, just, what a great guy. So he, he and I had a nice interview, too, and talked batman music it covers a lot of ground but like i said i'm also gonna try and keep the spirit of the series in there you know what i mean with the visuals and and things like that and fun props and you know just kind of a that spirit you know just uh, i want that to be in the film you know <laughs> it was my first batman it was you know it was what inspired me and eventually led me to this point so definitely while making this uh, documentary, have you have you learned anything about the music of Batman or the 1960s show that you weren't expecting? Like any, um, you don't have to give anything away, but um, just anything that really surprised you about like the making of the show or the score or anything like that? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I said, I keep going down rabbit holes, and you kind of have to uh, know when to climb back out of some of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a lot of weird stuff like. I mentioned the cast recording that came out and Burt Ward in particular, because he was sort of a uh, teen idol. They were trying to capitalize on that. So they hustled him off to a recording studio to try and get him to uh, lay down a few tracks. They could release as a single, you know, and sell a lot of records, unfortunately. um, And, you know, I'm not Burt will tell you this himself, you know, he can't sing at all. So it was a disaster, but they tried to bring a producer in to sort of shepherd it and kind of, you know, make some something out of it. And the person that they chose was a young Frank Zappa. Wow. So <laughs> Frank Zappa ended up producing these really bizarre tracks with Bert. Um, and the one that got released is called Boy Wonder, I Love You. You know, mostly because Burke couldn't sing very well, they had him just sort of speaking the lyrics over the music bed, and the lyrics were kind of culled from like some fan letters that Bert had gotten. So you know, it was like, "Dear boy, Susie writes, dear boy." You know, it was it's like really, it's hypnotically bad. You know what I mean? Like it's just. <laughs> Like what? How did this happen? You know, and so that's what I, that's what I want to know with this this one of the questions I want to answer with this film is you know like how did that exactly happen? You know. Now, of all the interviews you've had so far with this, or all the ones you've scheduled, do you have a favorite one? Like somebody you really wanted to talk to that was just you were really surprised to get to meet or anything like that? Oh I, no, all of them. I couldn't 
yeah, I couldn't possibly say a favorite. I mean, I'm just blessed that all of them kind of saw what I'm doing and understood it and took a leap of faith on it. You know, like Wally may have been how I initially met Wally, actually. It was something, yeah, it may have been. I'd have to think back, and my brain doesn't think back that far that easily anymore. So, but uh, I'm going to say it was Wally and I met because of this project, because it's actually started about seven years ago. And um, yeah, I had the idea, and I, I approached um, another person I'll get to as Paul Hefty, who is Neil Hefty, who wrote the theme song Sun. He's been a supporter from day one. He was actually the first person I reached out to when I had this idea because Neil had a uh, pass on at that point, unfortunately. But I figured, you know, if I can't get, like, family on board with it, you know, there's no point. You know what I mean? So I reached out to Paul, and luckily he was very receptive and been a tremendous booster from day one he's an executive producer on the film and what happened was I, I started contacting people from that point getting interviews lined up and stuff like that and then um my dad had a stroke and then when he they took him to the hospital they found his uh, cancer had come back so unfortunately he passed away not too long after that and so every, you know your life has to get put on hold <laughs> we ended up like having a take care of my mom and move her out of state and get her set up and sell her house and all this stuff. So, um, that was quite a long process. And then right after we got all settled, my wife and I, two weeks later moved into our new place and I developed appendicitis <laughs> to go to the hospital. And they told me, another, huh? yeah, then they told me I had diabetes too. So I was laid out for like another six months. It was just like endless, but eventually, you know, I, I, it just kept coming, but you know, I just kept going, I, I have to finish this, you know, I have to get back to it. So from that point, um, I just started recontacting people and kind of filming it on my own on weekends, you know, paying a, a camera guy and stuff out of my pocket. And that was really at the point too, where I started getting more into editing and after effects and things like that and teaching it to myself basically so that I could, so that I could save money in the long run and also it's just when you're an independent filmmaker the less people you have to rely on <laughs> the better you know i mean it kind of is blows sometimes having to do everything yourself but on the other hand if you know you're the one doing it and you know you only have yourself to blame if it doesn't get done you know what i mean so yeah, it's, more it's vision kind of yeah and plus you know people just it's just reality people just flake out on you and stuff so yeah you know, so yeah, I kind of got it to the point where I had a lot of the key interviews I needed and, you know, I just couldn't continue to really keep doing it on my own. So I really had to launch the crowdfunder to get it going. And, um, which brings us to today. Very cool. So are you in the crowdfunding, um, um, stage now or how, what, what stage in the film development are you in currently? Yeah, we have a two... Two weeks left on the crowdfunder, and we really need uh, to bring the bad fans together and get it. Uh, we have an okay start, but we really need everybody to go to support this. If you're a Batman fan, this is about really preserving the history of the character. You know, something that's never been, a story that's never been told. We want to. We have the the Blu-rays. We know pretty much everything else there is to know about the show. We need to write this last chapter, close the book on it, and you know. I have it for the ages. So, uh, B to the bat.com, everybody. <laughs> Five bucks, whatever, you know, it doesn't matter, but yeah. We, uh, yep. Help keep the Batman alive. <laughs> exactly. And every little bit helps. And share it too, you know, share it around, please. Definitely. So, I guess I have a couple more questions. Um, here's one that we, um, we ask everybody we interview because um, it's a topic that Corey and I debate quite often. What is your opinion on hairless cats? Hairless cats? Yep. Wow. Hmm. Hairless cat women, I might have an opinion on. There you go. Uh, I don't even know what that means. Uh, <laughs> hairless cats, they're, they're unique. Um, I don't know anything. I don't really know anything about them, how they're bred or anything. I primarily 
Remember the one in Austin Powers? Didn't he have a hairless cat in that? Yeah, right? that was um. That's I think that's the one that most people think of when um they think of that. Um, I forget what his name was, but yeah, that was um. It's really the only one I can think of either. Um, as long as the cats are happy, being hairless, um, they're odd and unusual, and therefore I love them. And they're cats. Cats, cats are great. I, you know, uh, as long as I mean, I, hopefully, there's no. I mean, they're born that way, right? Or they're bred yeah, that they're, way? Um, they're specifically bred to be hairless. Wow. Yeah. Hey, if they're happy cats. That's good enough for me. Oh yeah, yeah. Corey really likes them. My opinion on them is, I love cats. I love all animals, but it always reminds me of, um, like, you know, in Jurassic Park when they're like, you know, is it ethical to bring dinosaurs back? Well, that's my thing with um, hairless cats. Like, was it ethical to do this? Have we gone too far with science? I say <laughs> yes. Like, we've just we got to go back a little bit. Yeah. Well, all domesticated animals are sort of victim of that in a sense, you know, because they were they were all bred to to for certain things, you know, or a great many of them, you know, like either hunting dogs or, you know, is is it ethical to breed a dog to retrieve ducks? I don't have the answers. That's a good point. <laughs> so once um, the beat of the bat is uh, is finished, where will we be able to watch it? Uh, you will be able to watch it on Blu-ray, who will also uh, make it available digitally online for uh, if you for our backers. And I imagine will it'll be available just for digital purchase as well. Things being the way they are nowadays. Um, yeah, I don't know about any kind of theatrical release or any. We certainly will have a. Uh, a theatrical, at least one theatrical screening of it, you know, premiere type of thing. Um, but yeah, um, distribution is uh, much easier these days thanks to digital technology. That's for sure, and that's it's also much easier just to capture things, you know, because of all the the cost of everything that's gone down. So it's a, it's amazing what you you know. Definitely. How much you can do independently these days. It's really great. And where can we follow you to learn more about The Beat of the Bat and any other projects that you'll be working on in the future? Um, you can follow The Beat of the Bat on Facebook at The Beat of the Bat and Twitter, same thing, The Beat of the Bat. Um, like I said, the website is beatofthebat.com and that's it. That takes you right to the Kickstarter page right now, but all the information about the film lives there and a bunch of, you know, videos and trailers and teasers and things that we've got up um, with various people that we've interviewed and stuff like that um, is there. Uh, and Pat the Batman fan is my Twitter, so anything in general that I'm doing, you can follow me there. Very cool. So yeah. there you have it, uh, sorry. Um, there you have it, B movie fans. The Beat of the Bat, a documentary about the music from the 1960s television Batman series, created by Pat Evans. Pat, thank you for joining today. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, likewise. Thanks, man. Thank you. If you have an independent film you're working on and would like to discuss it, you can email us at bmoviebros at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at bmoviebros or my personal Twitter at bmoviepaul. Don't forget to listen to our podcast. We review a different bmovie each week. New episodes every Friday on our website, bmoviebros.com. If you have a movie you'd like us to review or any additional comments, feel free to leave a message below. This has been another bmovie interview. We are the bmovie bros saying... Be brave, be alive, and be back next time. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs>